down the back straight, going really well with the Italians, maybe slightly up from the Brazilians there in the green, the Italians moving up on the Brazilians, although good change from the Brazilians. Brazil leading at the moment from Italy and South Africa, South Africa still in this one, it's going to be really tight, Brazil will have a meter on South Africa, Italy messed up that final change over there. Ladies and G's, boys and G's, it's the Forbidden Son of Athletics, Karabo J. I'm back with another one. I hope I am audible. I hope you guys can hear me. Um, welcome to another episode of the Trek and Saturday ZA. Hey, I'm actually alone today. I'm with, I'm not with Tapis. <laughs> Tapis is, is, is unfortunately uh, absent today for the second episode. But yeah, um, he sends his apologies. We move on. Um... I hope you guys are good. I have been good. I have had a very good week. The reason why I said I hope I'm audible is because I'm using a different way of capturing the sound. Um, so what happened is last week we lost the sound around 24 minutes. Um, I don't know what happened. So I'm trying a new way to capture the sound. So I don't know if the sound quality will be the same. Um, I hope it is. So um, the phone is basically capturing the sound as well. Um, I'm using a different phone to capture the sound as well. So if the sound um, is not audible enough on this phone, on the small phone, I will then use um, the sound we have from that phone. So I think it will be a bit loud, but not so loud. Um, as you saw how the video started, um, South African Athletics is happy. South African Athletics is in a good mood after winning the gold medal at the ultimate event at the World Relay Championships in Ciesla. Um, or oh, in Portland, in Poland, in Poland, um, in Poland, it was last week, yeah, we spoke about it last week's, in last week's episode, I think on the Sunday, and then the final was on the Sunday, so we won it, um, congratulations, huge congratulations to Tando Jojo, um, Gift Leo Tlela, Clarence Munyai, Akane Simbini, um, you all ran your race. Um, huge shout out as well to the 4x4 team. Um, as much as you didn't win, but you got that Olympic qualifier. Um, there's time to get better. There's time to push harder. Um, well done, you know, to everybody who participated. As well as the 4x4 mixed relay. Um, I think you gained nothing but experience from such events. And well done to all the South Africans that participated in these events. So after that, coming into this week, um, we have some news. I'm also using a different way now of reading because... Here is an article. I'm on a website, but I'm reading what I have to do here. Um, so this week we had Derek Derek Mukaling who ran a 45.36 season best um, in the 400 meters. Obviously, he's a South African running for TCU. Um, he also graduated sometime this week. Well done to him. Congratulations on the graduation. I think it takes some time. You know, as a student, I know it. It takes time. It takes a lot out of you, you know, to get that qualification, be it whatever it is of, of, of whatever level that it is, but just getting that qualification at university or college, well done. I congratulate you um, also on your season best, Derek. Um, another person who needs congratulating. I think there's a lot of some good news coming from South Africans is Wenda now. We spoke about it after this after the SHMs. Yeah, SHMs preview show. After the SHMs, we spoke about Wenda now looking for that um Olympic qualifier. She definitely got it this time around. Um 55.16 at the AC and W open meeting on Wednesday in Porch. Um, was it Wednesday? No, it was Thursday. Yeah, it was Thursday in Porch. Um, 55.16, she ran 55.2 at SA Champs and she missed the qualifying standard. Nah, I think it was a 55.4, 55.4, 55.4. I think the qualifying mark or qualifying standard is 55.2. Yeah, um, I think the qualifying mark is the 55.2. She ran a 55.16. Well done to Wendell. Um, it's absolutely, um, oh yeah, I think she ran 55.22. I think, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> enough of the time. Well done to Wendell qualifying for the Olympic. Um, I think 
I first saw her at the 2016 Olympics. Obviously, she's going to the 2021 Olympics. That's definitely a good thing. Um, looking at Wendell and what she's doing for South African athletics in the 400 meter hurdles, she's definitely representing our women in that regard. And I said it, I said it a lot of times that she's really opening that um, um, that route or that tunnel for, for, for more women that are running the 400 meter hurdles in South Africa. You, I'm talking about your Rogel Josephs, Zine van der Valt, um, Giselle Macherman, Talent built. These are the women that are really going to be the future of this event, and there's no better person to lead them into the right direction than Wendy Nell. I think she's a really good role model for this event for them. Um, and yeah, congratulations again um, for qualifying for the Olympics. I think she's she's one of the few people that have qualified so far for the Olympics. But obviously, South Africa has that preliminary team that they will have and then maybe go out to camp because last year there was supposed to be a camp maybe they will go out for camp maybe not i don't know um the next thing on the charts is patuche zomaswangani um <laughs> the kid is doing something else um for the university of houston um a south african um man well done just well done um 20.14 a 20.14 I honestly think that's an Olympic qualifier. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I think that's an Olympic qualifier. 20.14. A very legal time in the 200 meters at the Tom Teller's Invitational on the 7th of May. Um, I think he also ran at the same meeting, maybe the day after the day before, probably two days event. Um, a 100 meter 10.04. And that was uh, by an illegal wind, unfortunately. 2.4, 2.4, 2.8. Something like that, plus 2.4, plus 2.8. Something like that, um, I think is he's really in good shape. Going into outdoors and knowing what happens in the US and how they progress on their side of sprinting. I mean, he's probably going to have like a ton of races. Maybe 10, 12 more races before, I don't know, before, I don't know, before maybe, maybe before Olympics or something like that. So he's definitely going to have some progress he's definitely going to see that okay this is my strong event he's definitely going to have that thing that uh, maybe he's going to pop even a faster time i think with the 20.14 now there's a possibility of going 20.0 possibility of going 20.0 possibility of maybe 19 um that's me being optimistic but yeah he's a south african doing it big um He's one to look out for at the NCAA champs this year, the outdoor championships. He's one to look out for. I think he's definitely a contender for a medal. Um, I don't know what color medal, but he's definitely a contender for a medal. If he progresses, as I think he will do, maybe he's going to go 20.1, 20.0 come June. You know, come June, 20.0 July, maybe, yes, he will be now running 20.0 every single day, like he's eating breakfast. Um, but... It's, it's, it's really interesting to see a young South African doing well in the U.S. in sprinting because I don't think it happens every single time. I don't think this is what we are used to. As much as you are Naso Jobudwana left for that, as much as you Derek Mukaling, you David as well left for that, it's really rare for me. It's really rare for me to see something like this, you know, and congratulations to him. I repeat, um, for the 100 meters, he went at 10.04, but it was an illegal win, so that performance is illegal. Um, or rather won't be um won't be cleared for 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 for, for, for like um, official results or something like that and then with the 200 meters he went 20.14 at the tom tellers invitational on the 7th of may congratulations my g congratulations um fly the flag high um he also has a youtube channel uh, so please subscribe to his youtube channel um uh, he should also subscribe to this channel uh, shout out to you um also guys subscribe to the channel as well let's grow the channel let's grow athletics in south africa let's grow athletics from south africa to the world you know let's do it let's do it let's do it in international news we had this is one of the biggest i think things that had have happened in athletics history javan harrison uh, javan harrison of lsu he's the first person in history to and the to rather to jump in the long jump um a distance of or rather a distance over and beyond 8.4 meters and then jump in the high jump or clear in the high jump a distance of 2.3 meters so listen i'm repeating it again he's the first person in athletics history to do this in the long jump 
he's jumped beyond 8.4 meters and in the high jump he has cleared 2.3 meters i i cannot i cannot even think about somebody who can ever do that again somebody who can match that again let's just call him the jump king of athletics and he's still not pro he's still a college kid um congratulations to him for doing this this is a huge milestone for athletics i think you know he will be sort of in the class of your jesse owens because he's the first person to ever do this um your jesse owens you know your your your, your elliot kipchoge as you know your your sir banisters this is a huge benchmark for athletics a lot of young athletes will look out um to him in the future he is the future of athletics he's the future of jumps you know i mean he excels with the long jump and the high jump so he's one to even call out for olympics um he can do well with both events uh but yeah he's still young he has a bright future i think he can do better but i see him more as a long jump specialist than a um, as a high jump specialist rather more than a long jump specialist because i think his high jump performances can get him um rather more gold more wins and more accolades than the long jump because there's a lot of people that can actually go beyond 8.4 so now is he gonna get to olympics or something to compete with maybe your two three people or four that can cross over or that can jump beyond 8.4 meters whereas in the high jump it's really tricky when it gets to another 230 meters so if he can go above 230 meters he can clear 30 meters then 2.30 meters and then he can compete for that gold with possibly Mutas Issa Bashim there's no one else who can compete with him I think at this time um your Brendan Starks of this world your Italian guy with the half beard I think they can't compete with the guy they can't compete with the guy 2.30 meters um they fumble at times 2.27 2.28 that's how far they go but congratulations to him those are the news we have this week um those are the highlights we have rather this week and um looking at i also mentioned the other one sa winning gold at the world relays um and congratulations everybody congratulations to everyone mentioned in these news so now something i wanted to focus about with tuppies this week which is uh, maybe our topic of the day or our topic of the episode is governance in athletics and to be specific and the reason why i'm touching on this or we are touching on this is because we had our asa presidential elections or rather possibly committee elections because the entire committee was being selected or was being elected and this is why i have this open and this here because this which i'm looking at is an article um obviously i'm going to read a few pieces from the article or a few of my opinions of what happened and then i will share them with you guys i'll share the i'll share my opinion with you guys so we had for for for, for president um head to head alex kosana which is which was the current president um and james Mulloy, which was the cga president at that time they were going head to head head to head for 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 the presidency of asa asa is athletic south africa so that's the governing body of athletics in south africa that's the organization that runs athletics in south africa basically you cannot have possibly a big meeting or a provincial meeting without asa giving you permission to have this meeting so um there were two candidates for the presidency let me rather read um the candidates for the different positions in the committee or rather the nomination list yeah there was an asa elections nomination list so shout out to the top runner for giving us this thing this is an article from the top runner um going for president was alex kosana and james muloi going for vice president was harold adams mutlazi kibabile oki kibabile shirin noble and then for the at least commission chairperson koto mukwena um hendrik mkanyeti john matani the agent the agent president Morna van der Merwe and, and Zonga Mele Dubeni. For the cross country, uh, Jean Fester, Jake Jacobs, Stephen Kanyele, and road running was James Muloi, Enox Kosana, Paul Bester, 
Kweli, izi kweli oge seli. Kweli, mkoba, ntatu, kwadiso, doram, ngwevu. And the Track and Field Commission is, um, or rather the, the people that were nominated was Jean Fester, John Matani, Sabata Kumalo, Peter Lawrence, um, Mangeta Zwani, and Kakata Maponyan. So all these people are part of the board, are part of the board. So now there's the president, there's the vice president, and there's the person who's the, who's the, who is the board member of the Athletes Commission chairperson, right? Who's the Athletes Commission chairperson, but is part of the board members of ASA. I hope I, I, I make sense. And there's someone in that board who is head of cross country. So yeah, that's what went on. And the way it worked was there were 60 votes, 68 votes that were cast. So let me read this. 68 votes was cast on the big day and the official with the highest votes will win. ASA board members present will each have the opportunity to cast one vote per member, which will bring the total to 12 votes. Each of the 17 provincial federations can then cast two votes, which are equal to 34 votes. And then six associate members present six associate members six associate members oh will present will cast one oh present will cast woo will cast one vote per person um and then it says members of the commission one vote per member excluding the chairpersons which brings the number of votes to 16 votes honorary members are not allowed to vote and that leaves the total number of votes that will be cast on the day or that was cast on the day at 68 the voting happened on saturday now guys the voting happened on saturday the 8th of may 2021 the new elected president was james Mulloy. so before james Mulloy got elected this is what he said on his part or rather what he wishes to see um where, where he sees athletics going he says, um, I think this is a part. So this is an article. I'm trying to read from an article, a part of where, where he says, right? Um, okay. So James Molloy disagreed saying that poor coverage of, rather, let me do this. Let me do this. Alex Kosana, who was the current president, said that he is confident that the work he has done since taking office six years ago has left him as the clear favorite to, ref to retain the position at tomorrow's eagerly anticipated elections which was on saturday so i think this um, article was released on friday so kosan is going toe to toe with experienced administrator james Malloy and south african marathon record holder Herb thais oh many believe that central Gauteng athletics president Malloy as the front runner having reportedly receiving seven endorsements from the total 17 provincial federations compared to the three regional bodies which will be which are backing Skosana. But in the last election, Moloi withdrew at the 11th hour, leaving Skosana to cruise to victory. So with the previous elections, James Moloi was also um, going for the presidency, but he withdrew in the last minutes. Now what I'm getting from this um, Alex Kosana believed that the work he has put in did the talking for him. You know, the work he has put in in the past six years was enough to get the people's votes. I'm talking about the people who are voting, not the athletes. Remember this and be please be aware of this as athletes. That's what for me is, is really confusing. And I asked Tapis this question the last time I was like, Tapis, what do these people do? You know, as presidents of ASA, what do you do what is your job what is um evident to say okay this president brought on this and this and this change right the only thing that maybe i saw or that the few things that i saw was the the the, the idea of having a camp for the olympics or the olympic team but that's sex cock you know that's not athletics that says cock um the idea of having an olympic camp like i'm saying that says cock Possibly the idea of having that four by one or really squad camp at Tux. That's something you could say the president has done. Or maybe he has initiated uh, with his board members at the time, with his track and field commission at the time. 
and now he speaks about how if you look during my time my time we have produced world championship athletes from Casta Semenya to Wade van Niekerk. Look at our 4 by one delay team recently won gold at the World Relay Championships in Poland, which shows how we have grown in the past 10 years. That alone shows the wonderful work I have done. I'm hoping to see the country producing more champions. Our country has got talent which only has been nurtured or has been tested to be nurtured in a good way which pro with proper coaches and the development structures for us to succeed. That's why it is so important for the federations to invest more in development structures because those kids down there hold our future, he said. It's a good piece of your you manifesting or for you in your manifesto. But now, has he done that? And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm the one to shoot. In this six years, this man has been president. Um, how many development structures have been formed for South African athletics and where? I come from a club that was supposed to be a development club, yet I paid for my own um, races at times, yet I paid for my own vest at times, yet I was even sometimes forced to pay for the training venue and it was the local municipality's venue. So now, if we are calling these things development structures, and we are from backgrounds that we don't have money, we are financially disadvantaged. What type of development are you putting in place? I also remember um, I was doing an episode on women in athletics and I received a message, a disturbing message from um, a coach in KZN. I won't mention what specifically happened, but now this person spoke about that he coaches um, apparently a development structure in the KZN but they don't even have a simple thing as sanitary pads for some of the females I don't know if I am going for the right people or I'm talking about the right people or I'm talking to the right people in this regard you know maybe there's a substructure whereas the people who are delegated to deal with this development structures specifically are not doing the job and there's a lot that goes on in these so-called development structures that really go wrong. We, we say the, there's development in South African athletics, there's nothing. You say um, you, 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 in your time as president, you produced the likes of Kasta Simenez and Wade van Nieker. I look at those athletes. Wade van Nieker was in free state working hard with Danny Arns. Um, Kasta Simenez um, changed coaches here and there from Jan Furster to... Um, Samuel Siping, where does now the president come in in that? Those are the decisions that athletes take. How does the president of ASA influence athletics to a point whereby athletes are performing? You know, is it maybe taking those big decisions of saying, okay, we are having the structure for athletes. We have a national coach for athletes. That's what I wish to see. I wish to see South African athletics going to a path where you will have a, nature, a national structure that when you become a national athlete you will have a training place um, you will be given clothing you will be given let's say even if it's an allowance you know for for you to be able to live you will be given transport allowance for you to be able to get to that venue if you are not living at that venue for you to get to that venue of training you will have a venue of training um, you will train with other national athletes. You will improve there mentally, physically. There will be all these types of things or other external factors that influence a runner's mind, a runner's performance or an athlete's performance. Um, you will have those national team coaches. I wish to see that. Not that once in a while that's when we decide to call out national coaches. Once in a while that's when we decide to do this and this and that. And we can have an ongoing conversation about the governance in South African athletics. I honestly wish to see this. Even with the young stars, even with the under 20s, we have World Under 20 Championships coming up. You look at the preliminary team, so many few people, but yet we have so many juniors doing well. Yes, they are not great as I say, great as internationally doing well. They are not that great, but give the youngsters an opportunity, give the youngsters that experience, you know, to perform on that high level. Give the youngsters an opportunity to go learn out there with the other under-20s, come back, 
get that experience and work harder. Please give the youngsters that. Increase their team members. Have those camps. Have those workshops. Have youngsters learning more about athletics. You know, combine these youngsters as well as older athletes to learn more about what they really need to do for the future. So that's how I see it. You know, um, the past six years, nothing has been done. I think I shared my opinion here and there. And then we talk about James Murray, which is the new president. He was the CJ president, now is the new president of ASA. He is, is, is really pounding his heart for more athletics coverage. He says if we get more athletics coverage in terms of TV, in terms of media coverage, sponsors will be more interested. Sponsors will know that they will benefit more. And I think in saying that, he has seen that, okay, fine, ASA has communicated or has contact or has a contract probably somehow with, with SABC. But SABC is not broadcasting all the athletics events. SABC is not giving us the athletics that we want to. Um, it's it's cross-country now. It's cross-country season. You know, it's your international season. Will SABC give us that? Definitely not. This coming week, it's USA Champs, students in university. These are the young stars of athletics as well. They are running in the university championships. Is SABC going to broadcast that? I don't think so. I don't think so. So those are the things that maybe James Mulloy is looking for. Um, he's looking for more coverage. You know, um, I think rather let's open more, 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 more rights or more, or more, or more doors for broadcasters. Let's do that. Let's not rather give it to SABC only as the national broadcaster. Let's also give it to your backtracks. Let's also give it to your Carabo Jays if he wants to do the interviews. Let's also give it to your Squared Sports. Let's also give it to, you know, every single one of um, a media broadcaster or a media person who's trying to expose South African athletics to the world. Please allow us that. James Molloy, as a new president, I don't know how you are going to do in your office. I don't know how you think you're going to do or what's your plan or anything like that. But I just wish to see some change. Um, if this is the first step, then that he will take that. Okay, let's get more media coverage. Then let it be so. Let it be so. Let's get more media coverage. We will also expose our athletics to people who are not athletes. This is one of the reasons why this channel is here or one of the reasons why the show is here. Is to expose athletics to different people different backgrounds and different places in South Africa. Um, we are watching you <laughs> as the president. I am watching you. Um, I, I hope by all means, you know, that I can get an interview with President James Mloy. Maybe he'll outline his plans. Um, we are hoping that there is progress. We're not, we're, not, we're not really in a dark space. I mean, we just won some, a gold medal. Uh, but I'm just hoping that there will be more from our new president elected president maybe even we i hope to see us as athletes voting for these presidents um as an asa member when you have a license please allow us to vote for our president um we hope to see that but for james Moore, good luck like i said we are watching you i am watching you and my eyes are on you um we are hoping you bring change we are hoping you give us what the people really want and yeah good luck Ladies and gentlemen, um, that's my piece on what's been happening this week. Um, that's my piece on the governance. I think we can have a longer episode or rather a different episode where we get more into depth into what we really want to talk about. And by the way, we had good news as well. These elections, we have our first female ever vice president, which is Shireen Noble. She's the newly elected vice president of ASA. You know, the first ever female to get into this role so i think that's that's a bit of a progress but yeah um congratulations to everybody that has been elected going to athlete of the week um uh, we have i had to decide i had to decide between part two between part two and the asa four by one and listen both parties did well but I am giving it to the ASA 4x1 men's team. Congratulations, gents. You have done well. The ASA 4x1 men's team. You are our athlete of the week. Or our athletes of the week, rather. 
um this is tando tlotlo this is gift lotlela this is clarence monia this is akani simbini um they even got congratulations from the president from a lot of people in south africa i also hope that that gold medal has sparked um something in south african athletics it will grow south african athletics in a certain way ladies and g's boys and g's it has been the forbidden son of athletics karabo j with another episode of the trek in southern za um i repeat athlete of the week the asa the sa team the football one team that